that cable. Yes? The captain wants to know if you'd like to sit up in the cockpit with him. Sure, thanks. Oh, pull up a chair, Marine. I'm Buzz Adams. Glad to know you, Joe Cable. Nice to meet you, Joe. What are those islands over there? Japanese? All of them? Just a minute! Something to break the monotony, Lieutenant. You know, if this war ever really gets started... It'll get started. Sure, sure, it'll get started. Yeah. You uh, ever hear of a French civilian down where we're going named Emile Debec? Yeah. Uh, what do you know about him? Nobody knows much about him. He's rich, got a big plantation on a hill, hunts, fishes. What's he doing out here? The story goes that he had to beat it out of France some 15, 16 years ago. Nobody seems to know much why. How about taking me on your mission with you, Lieutenant? Who says I'm on any mission? My mistake? Your mistake. Sorry. Where the CBs play. Bloody Mary is the girl I love. Bloody Mary is the girl I love. Bloody Mary is the girl I love. No, ain't that too damn bad? Her skin is tender as a baseball glove. Her skin is tender as a baseball glove. Her skin is tender as a baseball glove. No, ain't that too damn bad? <laughs> she is always chewing little nuts. Bloody Mary's chewing little nuts, <laughs> and she don't use them so dead. These beautiful grass skirts were made by myself, the professor, and Stupot, and three other CBs in half the time it takes your native workers to make them. See? No stretch. Look them over, sweaty pie, and uh, give me a price. All hand tied. All right, now what do you say, Sweatso? What am I offered? Gee, pretty nice work. Did you hear that? You can probably sell these to the chumps for five or six dollars a piece. Now, let's make a quick deal. I'll let you have the whole batch for, say, um, 80 bucks. Give you ten dollar. What? <laughs> ah. Now, see here, dragon lady, you... Hey, what's that you got there? 
A boar's tooth bracelet? Where'd you get that? Over there on Valley High? You like? Hey, come here. Come here. You don't run into these things every day. <laughs> They're scarce as hen's teeth. They're bigger, too. <laughs> that darn Valley High. Why does it have to be off limits? You can get everything over there. Shrunken heads, bracelets. Only officers can sign out boats. I'll get a boat, all right. I'll latch on to some officer who's got some imagination, who would like to see that boar's tooth ceremonial as much as I would. It's a pip of a ceremonial. Dancing, drinking, everything. Why, you big phony? We all know why you want to go to Bally High. Yeah? Why? Because the French planters put the young women over there when they heard the GIs were coming. That's why. Just as if they didn't trust us. The trouble with you is, ain't boar's teeth. It's women. It is boar's teeth. And women. got sunlight on the sand, we got moonlight on the sea. We got mangoes and bananas we can pick right off a tree. We got volleyball and ping pong and a lot of dandy games. What ain't we got? We ain't got days. We get packages from home. We get movies, we get shows. We get speeches from our skipper. And advice from Tokyo Rose. We get letters dust with perfume. We get dizzy from the smell. What? Don't we get, you know damn well. We got nothing to put on a clean white suit for. What we need is what there ain't no substa toot for. There is nothing like a day, nothing in the world. There is nothing you can name that is anything like a day. We feel restless, we feel blue, we feel lonely and in brief. We feel every kind of feeling, but the feeling of relief. We feel hungry as the wolf felt when he met Red Riding Hood. What don't we feel? We don't feel good. Lots of things in life are beautiful, but, brother, there is one particular thing that is nothing whatsoever in any way, shape, or form like any other. There is nothing like a day, nothing in the world. There is nothing you can name that is anything like a day. Nothing else is built the same, nothing in the world. As a soft and wavy frame, like the silhouette of a dame. There is absolutely nothing like the frame of a dame. Up, two, three, four, pick them up and set them down. Up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, pick them up, set them down. Up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, up, Luther. Luther. Yes, Miss Forbush. Have you done what you promised? Yes, Miss Forbush. <laughs> I did it all last night. Uh, uh, you don't have to open it now. 
wonderful work, Luther. Gosh, I guess I'm just about the luckiest nurse on this island to have found you. You're a treasure. Nice little girl. But some of them nurses, the officers can have them. They got them. Well, they can have them. So suppose a dame ain't bright, or completely free from flaws, or as faithful as a bird dog, or as kind as Santa Claus. It's a waste of time to worry over things that they have not. Be thankful for the things they've got. Trouble for me? Huh? Are you crummy, Major? No, I'm even crummier than that. I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant? Lieutenant. Hiya, Lieutenant. You on the rock? Just flew in on that PBY. Where from? Little island south of Marie Louise. Hey, Lieutenant. You sexy man. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you're looking pretty, uh, pit yourself. <laughs> Sexy! <laughs> Who's she? Uh, nobody. She's talking knees. You got sweetheart? Take home Chicago to sexy sweetheart. Oh, no. She's a Philadelphia girl. I doubt that she'd quite appreciate. What's that Philadelphia girl? What's that mean? No sexy? <laughs> you like I give you free. Free? You never give me anything free. You no sexy like Lieutenant. <laughs> Take. No, thanks. Where'd you get that, anyway? Bali High. Leave it to me. 
Intriguing little island, ain't it, Lieutenant? Officers can get launches and go over there. Valley High. What's that mean? Valley High mean... I am your special island. Mean... Here I am. Valley High, your special island, do tell him. I know. You listen, you hear island call to you. Listen. You know hear something? Lieutenant, uh, 
right now, uh, that island is off limits. Of course, uh, you being an officer, you could get a launch. I'd even be willing to requisition a boat for you. <laughs> but another thing goes on over there. The uh, ceremonial of the boars, too. After they kill the boar, they pass around some of that uh, coconut liquor. And women uh, dance with just skirts on. And everybody gets to know everybody pretty well. And I thought uh, you being up in the shooting war for such a long time without getting any uh, recreation, uh, thought you might be interested. Iron Belly. Here she is, sir. You are causing an economic revolution on this island. These French planters can't find a native to pick a coconut or milk a cow because you're paying them 10 times as much to make these ridiculous grass skirts. French plant the stingy stinker. Like you, crummy captain. I want you to pick up every scrap of this paraphernalia now. And for the last time, carry it way down there, beyond that pier, off Navy, Property. All right, you men. Take this stuff down there past that pier. Snap to it. Who is he? Don't know, sir. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, let's go. Get it down there. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Way down there. Off Navy property. You go, too. All right, Lieutenant. Thank you. Lieutenant? Who are you, anyway? Lieutenant Joseph Cable, sir. I just flew in on that PBY. A joyride? No, sir. Orders. A Marine under orders to me? Yes, sir. This is Commander Harbison, my executive officer. Commander? Lieutenant Cable? Well, what's it all about? Well, sir, my colonel feels that all these islands are in danger because none of us has been getting any first-hand intelligence. We don't know what the Japanese are really up to. He couldn't be more right. He feels that what we need is a coast watch. A coast watch? Yes, sir. One of our men with a radio hiding out on one of the enemy-held islands where he could watch for enemy ships when they come down through the bottleneck. Down this way. What do you think, Bill? Well, sir, our pilots could do a lot of damage to enemy convoys with information like that. How would you get a man on one of those islands? Have to sneak him ashore somehow, sir. How long do you think he could hold out there sending messages before the Japanese spotted him? It could be done, sir. Yeah, but who's going to do it? Well, sir, I've been elected. You got yourself quite an assignment, son. I think I'd be okay if I could take a man with me who really knew the country. Headquarters has found out that there's a French civilian here Used to have a plantation on Marie Louise Island. Did a lot of hunting and fishing there. Marie Louise. That's a good spot. Right on the bottleneck. What's this Frenchman's name? Emile de Beck. Ah. He lives right up there. Yes, sir. Do you know him? Well, I've met him, but I don't know very much about him. Yet. Is all this yours? Yes. Is it true that all the planters on these islands, are they really running away from something? Uh, who is 
is not running away from something. There are fugitives everywhere. New York, in Paris, even in Small Rock. Yeah, where you come from. Little Rock. Oh, Little. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Small <laughs> Rock. Little Rock. Oh. You know any fugitives there? I'll show you a picture of a Little Rock fugitive. I got this clipping from my mother today. Hey. <laughs> Enzin Nelly Forbush. Arkansas's own Florence Nightingale. That was written by Mrs. Leeming, the social editor. Mm. She went to school with my mother. Pretty girl, huh? That picture was taken before I knew what rain and heat and mud can do to your disposition. But it isn't raining today. Gosh, it's beautiful here. Just look at that yellow sun. And away off in the distance, those lovely little white clouds. Those lovely little white clouds could easily be gunfire. Oh, how awful. On such a day, boys getting killed, people getting. But you know, Emil, I don't think it's the end of the world like everyone else thinks. Do you? Perhaps the end of some worlds. Mm. Not this one. It can't be. I, I can't work myself up to getting that low. You think I'm crazy too? Well, they all do over at the Fleet Hospital. You know what they call me? Knucklehead Nelly. <laughs> I suppose I am. But I can't help it. When the sky is a bright canary yellow I forget every cloud I've ever seen So they call me a cockeyed optimist Immature and incurably green I have heard people rant and rave and bellow That we're done and we might as well be dead but I'm only a cockeyed optimist And I can't get it into my head I hear the human race is falling on its face And hasn't very far to go But every whippoorwill is selling me a bill And telling me it just ain't so I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope, and I can't get it out of my heart. Not this I don't know anything else about me. Yes. Would you like to see the view? Mm. You say you are a fugitive. When you joined the Navy, what were you running away from? Gosh, I don't know. It was more like running to something. I wanted to see what the world was like, outside of Little Rock, I mean, and I wanted to meet different kinds of people and find out if I liked them better. And do you? Well, I, I, I don't really know yet, I guess. They're different. Would you like some cognac? I'd love some. Looking on an ocean, beautiful and still. This is what I need, 
This is what I've longed for. Someone young and smiling, climbing up my hill. We are not alike. Probably I'd bore him. He's a cultured Frenchman. I'm a little hick. Younger men than I, officers and doctors, probably pursue her. She could have her pick. Wonder why I feel jittery and jumpy. I am like a schoolgirl waiting for a dance. Can I ask her now? I am like a schoolboy. What will be her answer? Do I have a chance? time, the boat from America comes once a month. The ladies, the wives of the planters, often go to Australia during the hot months. It can get very hot here. Oh, it can get hot in Arkansas, too. It can? Uh-huh. I have many books here. Marcel Proust, Anatole France. Did you study French in school? Oh, yes. Then you can read French. No. I can conjugate a few verbs. I'll bet you read a lot. Out here, one becomes hungry to learn everything, not to miss anything, not to let anything good pass by. Yes? One waits so long for what is good, and when at last it comes, one cannot risk to lose. So one must speak and act quickly, even if it seems almost foolish to be so quick. I know it's only two weeks. A dinner given at your officers' club, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Emil. And that is the way things happen sometimes, isn't it, Nelly? Yes, it is, Emil. Some enchanted evening. You may see a stranger. You may see a stranger across a crowded room. And somehow you know, you know even then, that somewhere you'll see her again. Again. Some enchanted evening, someone may be laughing, you may hear her laughing across a crowded room, and 
night after night As strange as it seems The sound of her laughter Will sing in your dreams Who can explain it? Who can tell you why fools give you reasons wise men never try? So many turned that evening when you find your true love, when you feel her call you. Across a crowded room, then fly to her side and make her your own. For all through your life, you may dream all alone. than you. If we have children, when I die, they will be growing up. You could afford to take them back to America, if you like. Think about it. Monsieur de Beck, la jeep de mademoiselle est ici. La jeep de mademoiselle. Votre jeep. Oh! Oh, my jeep! Thanks, Henry. Tell him I'll be right there. Goodbye, Emil. I, I had such a lovely time. I... Before you leave, Nelly, I want to tell you something. A while ago, you asked me a question. Why did I leave France? Oh, Emil, that was not... But I want to tell you. I had to leave France. I killed a man. Why did you kill him? He was a wicked man. The town bully. Everyone in our village was glad to see him die. And it was not to my discredit. Do you believe me, Nelly? You... You just told me that you killed a man, and that it's all right. I hardly know you. And yet I know it's all right. Thank you, Nelly. And you like my place? Yes. You... you will think? I will think. Merci, mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Nous chantons bien aussi. 
Ah oui? Attends, papa. Attends, papa. Dites-moi pourquoi la vie est belle. Dites-moi pourquoi la vie est gaie. Dites-moi pourquoi Mademoiselle, est-ce que, parce que, vous me I'm Lieutenant Cable. Oh, come in, Cable. Come over here. Look at this. We've got some dope on your Frenchman. Had a plantation on Marie Louise Island. Moved down here to this island 16 years ago. Married to a Polynesian woman for about five years. Two children by her. She died. Here's one thing we've got to clear up. Seems he left France in a hurry. Killed a guy. What do you think of that? Might be a handy man to have around. Cable? Good. Send her in. Here she is. Oh, come in, Miss Fallbush. Captain Brackett, please excuse the way I look. I, I, I was just... Oh, you look fine. May I present Commander Harbison? I have the pleasure of meeting Miss Forbish twice a week. We served together on the GI Entertainment Committee. How's the Thanksgiving Entertainment coming along? Very well, thank you, sir. We, we practice whenever we get a chance. May I also present Lieutenant Joseph Cable, Miss Forbush. Sit down, Miss Forbush. Miss Forbush, you've been seeing a French planter, Emile de Beck. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you know about him? Well, uh, uh, what do I know about him? That's right. Well, I, uh, we met at the officers' club dance. He was there, and I met him. Yes. Now, what kind of a man is he? Well, uh, he's very nice. He's kind. He's attractive. I just don't know what you want to know, sir. Miss Forbush, Captain Brackett wants to know. Did you discuss politics? No, sir. Would you have discussed politics, Commander? What we're specifically interested in is, uh, well, when these fellows come out from France, it's generally because they've had some trouble. Has he ever told you anything about that? Well, uh, uh, what do you know about his family, for instance? Oh, uh, he has no family. No wife, nobody. He doesn't have any children? No, sir. And you say he's never told you why he left France? Yes, sir. He left France because he killed a man. Did he tell you why? No, but he will if I ask him. Well, Miss Forbush, that's exactly what we'd like to have you do. Find out as much about him as you can. His background, his opinions, and why he killed this man in France. In other words, you want me to spy on him? Well, I'm afraid it is something like that. Why? Do you suspect him of anything? No. It's just that we don't know very much about him, and he's... Will you help us, Miss Forbush? I'll try. Thank you. You may go now, if you wish.
I don't know very much about him, really. Do I? He's kept a few secrets from her, hasn't he? Well, you don't spring a couple of Polynesian kids on a woman right off the bat. I'm afraid we aren't going to get much out of her. She's obviously in love with him. Well, that's hard to believe, sir. They tell me he's a middle-aged man. Cable? It is a common mistake for boys of your age and athletic ability to underestimate men who have reached their maturity. Sir, I didn't mean... Young women frequently find a grown man attractive. Strange as it may seem to you. I, myself, am over 50. I am a bachelor. And Cable, I do not by any means consider myself through. <laughs> What's the matter, Bill? Nothing. Evidently. <laughs> okay, Cable, see you at Chow. Yes, sir. Anything for Ensign Forbush? Oh, uh, your mail, Miss Forbush. Oh, thanks, Luther. And, uh, your hot water's still waiting for you. Oh, thank you, Luther. You're sweet. Oh, uh, don't change your expression, Lieutenant. Uh, just act like we're talking casual. I got the boat. What boat? We're shoving off for Valley High in 45 minutes. What are you talking about? The project you and I got, to go to Valley High. Oh, yeah. Well, you can forget it. <laughs> Lieutenant, what are you doing to me? I signed this boat out in your name. Well, then you're just the man to cancel it. Forget the whole thing. OK, mate? Lieutenant, you and me are going on a boat trip, whether you like it or not. Letter from home? Oh, yes. Do you get letters from your mother telling you that everything you do is wrong? No, my mother thinks everything I do is right. Of course, I don't tell her everything I do. My mother is so prejudiced. Against Frenchmen? against anyone living outside Little Rock. She makes a big thing out of two people having different backgrounds. You mean ages? Oh, no. Mother says older men are better for girls than younger men. This has been a discouraging day for me. Suppose you had a sister, and she was in love with a man like... De Beck? Yeah. I'd tell her to lay off. You don't have to worry about me anymore, because it's all off. With him? Uh-huh. Smart girl, Nellie. I'm going to break it off clean before it's too late. You think you can? Before I go any further, I just better not get started. Don't you think so, too, Gracie? Yes, I do. You do, huh? Yes. Well, I guess I do, too. to look so dramatic about it. Things like this happen every day. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair and send him on his way. Get the picture? I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms and send him on his way. If the man don't understand you, if you fly on separate beams, waste no time, make a change. Ride that man right off your range. Rub him out of the roll call and drum him out of your dreams. Oh ho, oh ho. Oh. I went and 
washed that man right out of my hair. I went and washed that man right out of my hair. I went and washed that man right out of my hair and sent him on his way. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, that song, is it a new American song? Well, uh, uh, it's an American type song. We were just kind of uh, uh, putting in our own words, you know. Uh, uh, where is everybody? I left a note for you at the hospital. It was to ask you to my home for dinner next Friday. Oh, uh... Well, Emil, I don't think I'll be able to come. You see, I have oh, these rehearsals... Oh, I have already invited some of my friends. The planters call on me. Oh. Oh, a big party. Well, well, then if I can't come, you won't miss me. But it is for you. It is for my friends to meet you. And more important, for you to meet them. To give you an idea of what your life would be like here. I want you to know more about me. How I live and think. More about you? Yes. You know very little about me. That's right. Uh, would you sit down? Do you think about politics much? And if so, what do you think about politics? I... Do you mean... But do you mean my political philosophy? I think that's what I mean. Oh. <laughs> uh, well... To begin with, I... I believe in the free life in uh, freedom for everyone. Like in the Declaration of Independence. C'est ça. All men are created equal, isn't it? Emil, you really believe that? But of course, Nelly. Well, thank goodness. Oh. That's why I am here. Why, I killed a man. Oh, yes, I, uh... <clears throat> I meant to ask you about that, too. Now, uh... I don't want you to think I'm prying into your private life, asking a lot of personal questions, but, uh... I always think it's interesting why a person kills another person. But of course, Nelly. That has worded you. When I was a boy, I carried my heart in my hand. So, when this man came to our town, though my father said he was good, I thought he was bad. I was young. He attracted all the mean and cruel people to him. Soon he was running our town. He could do anything, take anything. I didn't like that. I was young. I stood up in the public square. I made a speech. I called upon everyone to stand with me against this man. What did they do? They walked away. Why? Because they saw him standing behind me. 
I turned, and he said to me, I'm going to kill you now. We fought. I was never so strong. I knocked him to the ground. And when he fell, his head struck a stone and... I ran to the waterfront and joined a cargo boat. I didn't even know where it was going. I stepped off that boat into another world. Where I am now. And where I want to stay. Nelly, will you marry me? So few days in our life, Nelly. The time I have with you now is precious to me. Have you been thinking? I've been thinking. Born on the opposite sides of a sea, we are as different as people can be. It's true. Yet you want to marry me. I do. I've known you a few short weeks, and yet somehow you've made my heart forget all other men I have ever met but you. But you. Can explain it. Who can tell you why? Fools give you reason. Wise men never try. Every one of my crowd to make fun of my proud protestations of faith in romance. And they'll say I'm naive as a babe to believe any fable I hear from a person in pants. Fearlessly, I'll face them and argue their doubts away. Loudly, I'll sing about flowers and spring. Flatly, I'll stand on my little flat feet and say, Love is a grand and a beautiful thing. I shame to reveal the world famous feeling I feel I'm as carny as Kansas in August I'm as normal as blueberry pie no more a smart little girl with no heart I have found me a wonderful guy Conventional dither with a conventional star in my eye. And you will note there's a lump in my throat when I speak of that wonderful guy. 
I'm as tried and as gay as a daisy in May, a cliche coming true. I'm bromidic and bright as a moon happy night pouring light on the dew. I'm as corny as Kansas in August, high as a flag on the 4th of July. If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a wonderful guy. If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with the world. Before you give us an answer, I want to impress you with three things. First, you are a civilian and you don't have to go. Second, this is a very dangerous mission and there's no guarantee that you will survive or that it will do any good. Third, that it might do a great good. It might be the means of turning the tide of the war in this area. Yeah, I understand all these things. Are you ready to give us your answer? Yes, I am. My answer must be no. When a man faces death, he must weigh values very carefully. He must weigh the sweetness of his life against the thing he has to die for. The probability of death is very great for both of us. I know that island well, Lieutenant Cable. And uh, I'm not certain that I believe that what you're asking me to do is, is that we're asking you to help us lick the Japanese. It's as simple as that. We're against the Japanese. I know what you are against. What are you for? When I was 22, I thought the world hated bullies as much as I did. I was foolish. I killed one. I was forced to flee to an island. Since then, I have asked no help from anyone or any country. I have seen these bullies multiply and grow strong. And the world sat by and watched. Oh, the hell with this, Debeck. Let's be honest. Aren't you just a guy in love with a girl and you're putting her above everything else in the world? Yes, I do care about my life with her more than anything else in the world. It is the only thing that is important to me. This I believe in. This I'm sure of. This I have. I cannot risk to lose it. Good day, gentlemen. He's an honest man, but he's wrong. Of course we can't guarantee him a better world if we win. 
point is, we can be sure it'll be worse if we lose, can't we? Well, can't we? No, I don't know. What should I do now, Captain Brackett? Go back to my outfit tonight? Why don't you take a couple of days off and unwind? Unwind? Sure. Take a boat, go fishing. Boat? I call you, eh? You know escape Bali High when she call you. Hey, are you guys with the boar's tooth ceremonial? You know her. Yes, you go with them, big dealer. Lutalin, you come with me. Will you get your carcass out of here? He's going with me. Which way is it? All right, come on. That ain't all halibut in that net, you know, Lieutenant. Place is loaded, ain't it? Well, ain't it? No comment. takes out the two. Look at those tusks. Yeah, they've gone through the pig's face twice and once through his jawbone. 
That's why they're so hard to get out. Oh. Hey, look. He's dancing on his hot coals. Come on. Now for the cutting. I'm not going to wait around for that. What's this all about? You wait. There's nobody around here. You wait, Lieutenant. What's going on, Mary? What? You like? He's French name, but she no French girl. She talk a niece, like me. We are very pretty people, no? Liat nice daughter, no? Make nice wife. Yes? You speak English? Only few words. She talk French. Francais. Je parle Francais. Un peu. Moi aussi. Un peu. <laughs> Afraid of me? Oh. Avez-vous peur? No. Oui. You're just a kid. How did an innocent kid like you get mixed up with Bloody Mary? Set 
vieille femme. Votre amie? Ma mère. Your mother? Bloody Mary really is your mother. Well, that's why she's been looking me over like that. It's the boat, all right. Oh, let him wait. I touch your hand and my arms grow strong. Like a pair of birds that burst with song. My eyes look down at your lovely face. And I hold the world in my embrace. Younger than springtime are you, softer than starlight are you. Warmer than winds of June are the gentle lips you gave me. Gayer than laughter are you, sweeter than music are you. Angel and lover, heaven and earth are you too. And when your youth and joy invade my arms and fill my heart as now they do, then younger than springtime am I, gayer than laughter am I. Angel and lover, heaven and earth, am I with you? Billis. He be here soon. Look! gonna be my son-in-law. <laughs> Au 
revoir! Nelly. Huh? Nelly, please, Nelly. Stay for just a moment. Emil, you know I can't stay. Why not? No one will think anything. And, and, and I, I've got to get this cheap back. I, I stole it. You must never return anything you steal. Then they know you stole it. Uh, I really just borrowed it, or, or rather someone stole it for me. I, uh, a wonderful man named Billis. I'll have to sneak around behind the hospital as it is. In that case, I forbid you to go. If you have to sneak back without anyone seeing you, you might as well sneak back later. You're absolutely right. Au revoir, Emil. Au revoir. No, 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 Harry. Parmesan, Parmesan, the man. Oh, I never had such a wonderful time in my whole life. They're nice people, no? Oh, they're lovely people. That cute old man who spoke French with me and made believe he understood me. And that exciting native couple who danced for us. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's so different from Little Rock! <laughs> what on earth are you laughing at? Am I drunk? Oh, no! Oh, yes, I am. But it isn't the champagne. It's because... I'm in love with a wonderful guy. I am in a conventional dither with a conventional star in my eye. And you will note there's a lump in my throat when I speak to that wonderful guy. I'm as trident as gay as a daisy in May, a cliche coming true. I'm bromidic and bright as a moon happy night pouring light on the dew. I love, she thinks I'm a wonderful guy. Uh, oh, imagine leaving all of this wonderful champagne. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Here, Emil. You have some, too. It, it's such a waste. Here, here is another bottle. This is how it feels Living on a hillside Here we are, just like two old married people are. Our guests have gone home, and we're alone. This is what I need. This is what I've longed for. Someone young and smiling here upon my head. Emil. My mother says we have nothing in common, but she's wrong. We have something very important in common, very much in common. Yes, we are both in love. Yes, but more than that, I've had enough. We're the same kind of people, fundamentally. You and me. We appreciate things. We get enthusiastic about things. It's really quite exciting when two people are like that. We're not blasé. You know what I mean? Yes. We are both knuckleheads, cockeyed optimists. I hear the human race is falling on its face. And hasn't very far to go. But every whippoorwill is selling me a bill and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope and I can't get it out of my heart.
Nelly. Nelly, I, I have a surprise for you. Oh. No, stay there. Oh. oh! Why, you're the cutest things I ever saw in my whole life. <laughs> what are your names? You probably can't understand a word I'm saying, but oh my goodness, you're cute. Nelly, I want you to meet Gana and Jerome. Gana and Jerome. Nelly. Nelly? Nelly? <laughs> Evet, Raoli, wait. Wait, eh? Bonsoir, Nelly. Bonsoir, Nelly. Bonsoir, Nelly. Aren't they adorable? Those big black eyes staring at you out of those sweet little faces. <laughs> Are the Henrys? They're mine. Oh, of course they are. They look exactly like you, don't they? <laughs> Where do you hide their mother? She's dead, Nelly. She's... Emil, they are yours. Yes, Nelly. I'm their father. And their mother was a... Polynesian. She was beautiful, Nelly. And charming, too. And you loved her. I want you to know I have no apologies. I came here as a young man. I lived as I could. Of course. But I have not been selfish. No woman ever hated me try to hurt me. No, no woman could ever wa want to hurt you, Emil. What time is it? I have promised to get that jeep back. Oh, oh, this is awful. Oh, what, 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 just look at the time. Please, Nelly, wait. I, I'll drive you home. Oh, you'll do no such thing. But anyway, I couldn't leave the jeep here. I, I've got to get it back. Don't I... go now, Nelly. Don't go yet, please. Oh, I... well, I, I have to go. Yes, this, this is, this is just terrible. I, I won't be able to face the girls in the hospital as it is. I... You can't imagine the way they look at you when you come in late. Yes, Nelly. I'll... I'll call you, Emil. I'll come by tomorrow. Yes. Nelly. Oh, no. Oh, dear. There are those awful rehearsals for Thanksgiving Day. I'm teaching them a dance and they want to rehearse night and day. But after that, thank you for tonight, Emil. I had a wonderful time. It was the nicest party, and you were a perfect toast. Goodbye. Nelly, I, I... Please, Emil, please stay here. Please don't come to the jeep, please. Nelly, I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. And I love you, too. Honestly, I do. Please let me go. Oh, please let me go.
Jacques Barre want to marry Liat. He asked again last night. You mean that old French planter you told me about, the one you despise? You can't let her marry a man like that. This white man too and very rich. I don't care, you can't let her marry him. Okay, then you marry her. Lou Talon, you have good life here. I am rich. Since war, I make $2,000. War go on, I make maybe more. Give all the money to you and Liat. You no have to work. I work for you. All day long, you and Liat play together. Make love, talk happy. No think about Philadelphia. It's no good. Happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? Talk about the moon floating in the sky, looking like a lily on a lake. Talk about a bird learning how to fly, making all the music he can make. Happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? Talk about the star looking like a toy peeking through the branches of a tree. Talk about the girl. Talk about the boy counting all the ripples on the sea. Happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? The girl saying to the boy, You and me is lucky to be us. Happy talk, keep talking, happy talk. Talk about things you like to do. You got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how you gonna have a dream come true? If you don't talk happy, and you never have a dream, then you'll never have a dream come true. It's good idea. You like? <laughs> Wait a minute. Leah, I want you to have this. It was my grandfather's. My dad carried it through the last war. 
first minute I see you, I know you right man for Leah, and she right girl for you. You have special good babies. Mary, I can't marry Leah. Was your last chance. Now she marries Jacques Barre. Come, Liat. <gasps> Give me watch. <laughs> I guess we'll get opened all right. I'm sorry, I can't go on. Oh, sure you can, Miss Forbush. You're the whole show. I'm sorry, Luther. I don't know what's the matter with me. I... What's the matter? Well, sir, w w would you take care oh, of her, please? I, I, I'm so sorry. Please excuse me. It's nothing honest, Mr. Really. It's nothing. I, I know. All right, all right, let's go. Come on, back to the deck. Get them weights. Let's dance. Come on, okay. Hitch, kick, and scissors. Hitch, kick, and scissors. A transfer? Yes, please. To any other island but this one. Miss Forbush, I don't want to pry into your affairs, but whatever is bothering you is some personal thing, of course. But I wonder if you realize just how unimportant it is. Unimportant. Yes. And how important you are at this particular time. I mean the Thanksgiving Follies. Why, you're the star, the choreographer, the whole spirit of the thing. I don't think a little show like this is very important. And that's just where you're wrong. Miss Forbush, up to now in this war, our side has been having a merciless beating in two hemispheres. And nobody's going to be going home until that situation is reversed. Now, it may take a long time before we can get any big operation underway. Before the boys here get off this island. They're lonesome, homesick boys. And no matter how tough they talk, don't you think they're not looking forward to this little show, as you call it? This isn't a little show, Miss Forbush. This is a big show. My doll is as dainty as a sparrow Her figure is something to applaud Where she's narrow, she's narrow as an arrow and she's broad, oh, we're a broad. 
should be Barad. Fun. That's my little honey bun. Get a load of honey bun tonight. I'm speaking of my sweetie pie, only 60 inches high. Every inch is packed with dynamite. Her hair is blonde and curly. Her curls are hurly burly. Her lips are pips. I call her hips twirly and whirly. She's my baby, I'm her pap. I'm her booby, she's my trap. I am caught and don't wanna run, cause I'm having so much fun with honey bun. A hundred and one pounds of fun, that's my little honey bun. Get a load of honey bun tonight. I'm speaking of my Sweetie pie, let's get off the stage. Oh, 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 oh,
really are a honey bun. These beautiful flowers. I needed someone to think of me tonight. I appreciate it, Luther. You don't know how much. Miss Forbush, I would like to have you know that that I consider you the most wonderful woman in the entire world, even including the fact that you're an officer. And, and I just can't go on being such a heel as to let you think I thought of giving you those flowers. Oh, but you did give them to me, and no. I... No. Here's the note that came with them. of evening, looking out on a silver flake to see, and ask the moon, oh, how soon, how soon will my love come home to me? Will my love come home to me? What's the matter, Nellie, the nurse? Joe Cable. Having diplomatic difficulties with France? Joe, who let you out of the hospital? Me, I'm okay. Come Nelly? on. Nellie, are you ready? Oh, Bill. Bill, would you wait just a minute, please? Sure. You're trying to get over to Bally High. That little girl you told me about. I've got to. All the time I've been in the hospital with that darn malaria. I haven't been able to see anything but her face. I love her and... What kind of a guy am I anyway? I love her and yet I said I couldn't marry her. And I don't understand myself. If I love her, why don't I marry her and... Stay here and... You're just far away from home, Joe. We're both far away from home. But it doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. I guess it does anyway. I guess people like us... Well, we just have to go back to where we belong. What about that girl of yours back in... Philadelphia? My girl back home I'd almost forgot A blue-eyed kid I liked her a lot We got engaged Both families were glad and I was told by my uncle and dad that if I were clever and able, they'd make me a part of a partnership. Cable, cable, and cable. How far away, Philadelphia, PA, Princeton, MJ, how far are they? From coconut palms and banyan trees and coral sands and Tonkinese. How far away, Little Rock A R K. Princeton and J. How far are they? How far are they? From coconut palms and banyan trees and coral sands and... Nelly, I must see you. Emil... Could you excuse uh, us, Lieutenant Cable? No, Joe, stay. Stay, please. I've been meaning to call you, Emil. You have asked for a transfer. Why? What does it mean, Nelly? Uh, uh, I'll explain it to you tomorrow, Amy. No, now. What does it mean, Nelly? 
and it means that I can't marry you. Do you understand? I, I can't marry you. Because of my children? Oh, not because of your children. They're sweet. Is their Polynesian mother then? Their mother and I. Yes. I can't help it. It isn't as if I could give you a good reason. I... There is no reason. This is emotional. This is something that's born in me. It is not. I do not believe this is born in you. Well, then why? Why do I feel the way I do? All I, all I know is I, I can't help it. I, I can't help it. Joe, Joe, explain how we feel. Joe! Nelly. Bill! Bill! Nelly! Bill! Can we go now? Please? What makes her talk like that? Why do you have this feeling, you and she? I do not believe it is born in you. I do not believe it. It's not born in you. It happens after you're born. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught. You got the right idea, Debeck. Live on an island. Yes, sir. If I get out of this thing alive, I'm not going back there. I'm staying here. All I care about is right here. Yes. So, when all you care about is here, yeah, this is a good place to be. When all you care about is taken away from you, there is no place. came so close to it. So close. Oh, 
close to my heart she came Only to fly away Only to fly as day flies from Back home, whenever I got in a jam, I used to go hunting. So what do I think I'll do now? Good hunting up there around Marie Louise. Carriers, cargo boats, troop ships. Big game. Back. Would you reconsider going up there with me to Marie Louise Island? I mean, now that you haven't got so much to lose, we could do a good job, I think. You and I. How could a PBY land anywhere near that island without being seen by the enemy? It will not land near the island, but far out at sea. I know the fishing grounds my friends use. And I know two fishermen there, Inato and Basil. They will help us. Well, the equipment's all aboard, sir. We loaded it while it was still dark. You better wait a while yet before you take off. Above all, this must look like a casual, routine flight. Well, there's still plenty of time to change your mind. the parachutes or not? No, it looks calm enough for us to set down. No parachutes. All right. Looks like a summer day in Maine. That's a state in America. Yeah. Lobsters. Lobsters. Hey, you guys better start getting into that gear. Hey, we're approaching Marie Louise. Plane. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. 
Everybody. What's well, Luther? What are you doing on this plane? How'd you get on here anyway? Well, I thought maybe you might need an extra man. It seemed like an interesting project, and I. What's the matter, Lieutenant? You feeling sick or something? Look, if you don't like the idea, we'll just forget it. I'll go back to the baggage compartment. Just pretend you never saw me. I'll kill him. Now, Lieutenant, if I thought you were going to take this attitude, I wouldn't have volunteered my services. How do you like this character? I'm going to have you court-martialed for this, Billis. You better take it easy. I'm going to ride you out of the Navy. You better take it easy. Do you realize that this is a secret mission of I the Ethos I realize it's a secret court? mission, and I'm going to keep the mission. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Mission, huh? Well, it's no secret now. Hello, this is Beer Buster Burry. Beer Buster Burry. Yeah, look, say, look, I got a man parachuting down into the Empress Augusta Bay. That's right, you guys are gonna have to help me, because I can't. Right, Roger and out. So, it's gonna be one of those days, huh? Okay. Look, drop a boat back there, will you? to pieces. I can't. I gotta get you guys in first. After that, I'll come back and pick up the pieces if there are any. Okay, let's go. and they're shooting at him. Well, let's make them shoot at us. Send in a destroyer if necessary. Aye, aye, sir. The Admiral says go all out. Do you see any fishing boats? Okay, 
we set down here? Quebec? I can set down anywhere. I'll take it. This is a black day for the Navy. A black, black day. How much did you say this cost, Bill? It's estimated at $600,000, sir. Did you hear that? That's what your little stunt today cost the taxpayers. Six hundred thousand dollars. What are you grinning about? I was just thinking about my uncle. Remember my uncle I was telling you about? He used to tell my old man I'd never be worth a dime. Excuse me, sir. Billis, you've been striking for the brig ever since you hit this island. And today you finally made it because Captain Brackett and I are going to throw the book at you. Sir, uh, may I barge in? My co-pilot and I, sir, we've been sort of kicking this thing around, and well, we feel that Luke well, Bill is here, down in that rubber boat with all the airplanes buzzing around him, caused sort of a diversionary action. It made it a lot easier for us to land cable and the Frenchman without being seen. In fact, it turned out to be an awful lucky break for us, sir. What do you want me to do? Give this guy a gold medal? I don't want no gold medal, Captain. But, uh... But I could use a little more um, freedom, a little room to swing around in, if you know what I mean, if you get the picture. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get the hell out of here! Come in, get on. Captain, Captain! Hello, come in. This is the Frenchman. Do you hear me? This is Kennel. Go ahead, Frenchman. This is our first chance to send news to you. We have made contact with former friends of mine. We are set up quarters in a very nice hall in a rock. No room, but a lovely view. We can see right down into the bottleneck. First, the weather. Rain clouds over Bougainville, the treasuries, Choiseul, New Georgia. We expect rain in this region from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Oh, 0900 to 1400. Oh, my friend Joe corrects me. Oh, 0900 to 1400. You must not expect from us any regular communication. There are hundreds of Japanese in this region. It will be necessary to constantly change our quarters. And now our military expert, Joe. All you Navy, Marine, and Army pilots, write this down. Surface craft. 19 troop barges headed down the bottleneck. Speed about 11 knots. Ought to pass Bonica at about 20 hundred tonight. Escorted by heavy warships. As for aircraft, 22 oh, bombers. Betty. A bottle of beer says I get the first strike. at 0600. Oh, 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 hey, 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 Stick it out for two weeks. Yeah. yeah well, Everybody thought they'd be dead pigeons in a couple of days. I tell you, those two guys are doing us a lot of good. That Frenchman reported 40 bombers north of Munda. We took off and 40 bombers right in the nose. Boom, boom. How do those guys keep alive up there? The enemies all around? How do they do it? That Frenchman knows these jungles around here like the palm of his hand. He's a hunter, see? All I know is they changed the whole setup here. I think we got the Japanese on the run. That's what the Frenchman said. <laughs> well, is it my lead? It's your yeah. Lead. Let's see. Come on, come on. I got plenty on this. Listen carefully, please. Ceiling today unlimited. 33 fighters, zeros, have moved in from Bougainville. Their course is approximately 0 2, 3 degrees true. I'm certain heavy bombers will follow. I think something big is afoot. That's all I have time for now. Joe and I must change our position immediately. Planes are directly overhead. 
two only, but they're looking for us, I think. They know about where we are. I will try to get back to you later. Good luck. They got us pretty well pinpointed. Stay here. In a few minutes, it will be dark enough to run through it. No, I think we're right. It looks like they're going all out. Even these planes. Stop looking for us and going away. Let's make a run for it. All right, let's go. And, and we have a lot of fighter pilots over in the ward, and, and they keep talking about a Frenchman. The Frenchman said this, and the Frenchman said that, and... I was just wondering if the Frenchman they're talking about could be my Frenchman. Yes, Miss Forbush, it is. I couldn't tell you before, but... Then he is behind enemy lines. With Lieutenant Cable. Hello, this is Emil the Beck. Please listen to me carefully. I haven't much time. My message today must be brief and sad. Lieutenant Cable, my friend Joe, died a few minutes ago. I will never know a finer man. I wish he could have told you the news. The Japanese are pulling out. There is great confusion here. My guess is that the enemy will try to evacuate troops from Cape Esperance tonight. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. Make the most of it, my friends. You may not hear from me again. They are coming back. They're right above me. Is that all? Is that all? Can't you get them back? Canada, Frenchman. Canada, Frenchman. Come in, Frenchman. I'm sorry, sir. He's cut off. How far away? Philadelphia, PA. Poor Joe Cable. Captain Brackett, do you think there's a chance I'll ever see Emil de Beck again? There's a chance. Of course there's a chance. I didn't even know he was going. Of course not. How could he tell you? Now, don't blame Emil de Beck. He's OK. He's a wonderful guy. Huh. He has got a chance, hasn't he, Bill? Of course, there's always a chance. Come back so I can tell you something. I know it counts now. Just you. All those other things. The woman you had before. Her color. What, what piffle. I, what a pinhead I was. Come back so I can tell you. Oh, don't die before I can tell you. All that matters is us. Being together. That's all. If you think of what you said to me that day, you can stay alive, Emil. I know you can. Think of what you said. Live, live, live. Miss Nan. 
Ness. Please. Please, Miss Ness. Where is Lieutenant Cable? Who are you? I am mother of Liat. Who? Liat. She won't marry no one but Lieutenant Cable. Oh, oh my darling. Hey, Billis, let's head back, huh? Our outfit's about a mile back down the beach. Suppose they call our names. Yeah, they may be ready for us to board the ship. Ah, uh, they won't be ready for hours yet. This is the Navy. Ha, look at that beach. Swarming with eager beavers. 10,000 guys. All right, all right, you men. Stay down there with your own unit where you belong. You sea bees, you belong down the beach this way. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where I can find Captain Brackett, sir? Down the beach this way. Thank you, sir. That's all. I beg your pardon, sir. Can I speak to you a moment, sir? Who is it? Billis, sir. Luther Billis? Yes, Billis. What is it? We're moving out now. I know, sir. Stupot, the professor, and me was wondering if anything is being done about rescuing the Frenchman off that island. We hereby volunteer for such a project. A triple diversionary activity, like I done to get him on there. You could, uh... You could drop us in three rubber boats on three different sides of the island. Confuse them out of their minds. Get the picture? That's very fine, Billis, but you're too late. Operation Alligator is underway. Landings were made on a bunch of Japanese-held islands during the night and early this morning. Marie Louise Island was the first one they hit. How about that Frenchman? Did they get him? Is he alive? We don't know. Lieutenant Buzz Adams flew up there to find out. But it would be just too bad if a part of this huge operation couldn't have saved one of the two guys who made it all possible. The big ones are battleships, and uh, the little ones are uh, destroyers. They're moving out, you see, because, well, there's been a big change. They won't be around here much anymore. Just off and on. A few of us. Did you understand anything I said? Vous ne comprenez pas? Oui, oui, nous comprenons. Oui. Now, while I'm down at the hospital, you've got to promise me to manger everything. Everything that's put before you on the table. Sir? Le table. Sir? Le table? Sur la table. Oh, sir, la table. Merci. Jerome, come back here and sit down. Assez yay vous. Now you have to learn to mind me when I talk to you and, and be nice to me too. Because I love you very much. Je t'aime. Je vous aime. Now, mangez. Chantez, Nelly. Mm, I will not sing that song. You just want to laugh at my French accent. All right. But you've got to help me. Dites-moi pourquoi la vie est belle. La vie est belle. Dites-moi pourquoi. Pourquoi what? La vie est gaie. Papa, pourquoi, chère mademoiselle? Parce que, parce que vous m'aimez. Et maintenant, mangez, mangez. 